What is going on guys? Welcome to your 48th HTML5 tutorial and in this lesson I want to start talking to you guys about the Web Storage API. So what the Web Storage API is, is basically a new way that we can store data using a website. So before, if you ever made a website and you wanted to store some data from the user for maybe a shopping cart or maybe they were playing a game and you need to store some variables, you were kind of limited to sessions and cookies but the web storage API is going to change all that. It's going to give you a new awesome way to store data, make it much more efficient and give you guys another set of tools that you can use. It's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I did is I wiped out everything in my CSS and JavaScript file. However, I'm linked to them both. I didn't want to go ahead and rewrite the whole template because that's kind of worthless. So what I'm going to do is start from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is build a new section and I'm just going to give it the ID of left ID. Now I guess I might as well go ahead and explain to you guys what thing I'm going to be building. Actually let me go ahead and name this left box that might be a little better. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building two boxes on the screen. On the left hand side it's just going to have a form where we can pretty much insert some simple data and on the right hand side or on the right box what we're going to be doing is just testing out displaying that data. So I'm not going to be you know, inserting into a database or making it into a game or anything. I'm just going to be showing guys how to save it through a form and how to display it. But once we learn how to save it and also how to access it, then you guys can use this for anything you want. A game, a shopping cart, uh, you know, Facebook, MySpace, type website, whatever the heck you want. So anyways, that's what we're going to be doing, so I didn't want to just leave you guys in the dark. So we got a section in this left box right here is where we're going to be putting our form. But for now, let me just go ahead and make the right box while I can copy that code. And I'm just going to go ahead and name this right box. Now by default, it's not going to display anything. So let me just go ahead and write nothing yet, Haas, right in there. Because we're going to be changing the inner HTML of this to display what we stored but by default before they even use this application before they even store any data they're gonna see nothing yet Haas because you know might as well test out I don't know what we're doing I just felt like typing something to be honest but there you go so what I'm gonna be doing is building a form with three form elements in it a uh, text area two text areas actually one's gonna store the key the other one's gonna store the value and the third one is just gonna be a button where you can press it and actually save your information so let me go ahead and make three paragraphs and copy this crap right here alright now the first one like I said is going to be the key now I wanna mention this whenever we are storing information that the user enters it's basically like storing a variable you have your variable name in the variable value so you can, the name could be like age and the value could be 15 the name could be username and the value could be the new Boston so what they do is they call these uh, variables keys and they call the values I don't know if you could guess this one value but let me just go ahead and um, I'm just going to write one like that and two because I'm going to, well, I'll show you guys what I'm doing in a second and it's going to make sense. So for the first one, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a simple input and this is just going to be a type of, and someone is sexting me right now, that's great, a type of text and the ID for it is just going to be one and I named it ID one because it's the very first text box and you know I figured hey why not give it the ID of one so for number two what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be making this a text area and you end those with text area it's not a single tag it's a, a double tag and I'm going to be giving this the ID of two and that is just because whenever I don't want to give it the ID of key and value because whenever we're working in our JavaScript uh, functions there's actually a method called value or a property called value so I don't want to confuse the two so anyways just go ahead and name this first text box give it an ID of one and give the second text area you can make a text box if you want but I'm gonna give this an ID of two you can give them names if you want but names aren't really gonna matter for this uh, tutorial so the last thing we want to build is a button so input type equals button and for the ID 
just give it the ID of button and give it a value of save. Now the value is what text you want to appear on the button. So I just want my button to say save, just like that. So as you notice, and I probably should have done this, I don't know why I do it this way, but I always build what's inside the form before I actually build the form itself. So that might have confused you guys. So let me just go ahead and build that form. Form, and go ahead and copy this right there, and paste it right there, and ending form. So as you can see, we have two boxes on the screen right now. A left box, which pretty much has a form with three elements in it. The first one is just pretty much an area to enter text. The second one is the area to enter text. And the third one is a button to save it. Basically, we're going to be making a variable with the name of this, giving it a value of this. And whenever we have everything set, we can save that variable by clicking this button right here. So let me go ahead and save this and run and launch in Chrome and show you guys what we got. We pretty much got a variable name, which can be like person, a value, which can be Bucky. And whenever we save it, it's going to display in our other box. But as you notice, a couple things. First of all, this is probably the ugliest looking website I've ever made in my entire life. So what we need to do in the next tutorial is style this. You know, we don't need to make it look great, but make it look at least a little better than this piece of crap. And also, add some functionality to this baby so, you know, I don't have to sit here, click and save all day, and nothing happens. So, that's what we're going to be doing in the upcoming tutorials, and yeah, I can tell that you guys are excited already. So, anyways, there you have it. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.